Hi. Welcome back to uh, Air Engine Research. <clears throat> I've been working on a new version of a original engine that I created some four or five years ago, maybe a little longer. It's one that I call the uh, two-plate, uh, three-cylinder eccentric drive. And it worked rather well, well <clears throat> except I couldn't I couldn't keep the uh, the valving system on it to to stop leaking. Every time you'd get it under a, a a load, it would leak, and it just couldn't build up enough pressure to give you any torque. So, over the years, I have created a new valve that uses a single push rod, and it has an O-ring seal inside, and this one does not leak, so I can use it to run the original engine, which I really liked. But in the meantime, I had worked on some other ideas, and one of them that I thought would work out pretty well, I called it the uh, orbital engine. And it has one... Uh, push or one crankshaft that is mounted solid to a ring and it rotates a center crankshaft. But this goes in an orbital motion so that's why I called it the orbital engine. Uh, well this one is the first one that I was able to create a valve that didn't leak. So once I did that then that gave me the opportunity to come back and, and use this, this engine. Now this one works re really well, although I had to come up with a, what they call a flexible uh, valve stem because the cylinders rotate, so they, they, they have to bend in order to still work in the proper orientation. Now, like I said, this one works rather well, but the problem is the vibration. It, it just cannot be used because of that. It looks like it runs fine there. What happens when it starts running? It just, you have to have it mounted solid to something, and if it's not large enough, it'll still vibrate like crazy. So, I just cannot use that. I did try putting it on my bicycle uh, in that last, well, yeah, it was, I think I showed one of the videos with it, but maybe not. But anyway, it, it made the bicycle go, but it just was too unreliable. Now, this one, it has some features that my original one didn't have. It has bearings that I that I put in here where the push rods ride on, and it also has bearings out here on three spots to to take up any any pressure off of the drive shaft rods. And this one just rotates in a straight thing. The cylinders here are mounted solid but I do still have to have some little bit of a flex in the uh, push rods just to, because of the offset when it rotates. But this one does not vibrate hardly at all. And if it does, it's very, very little. You can almost let it set free on the desk and it, it may move a little bit around, but it doesn't vibrate. I don't have my third cylinder or my third valve on it yet, so it will only start when the right position with either one of these is in the, in the right place. There. As long as this is directly out from the thing, it'll run.
Well, it stopped in the wrong position, otherwise it would have started. There. Go back to there again. Not quite far enough. I'm very satisfied with that. Just a matter now, I need to get rid of the wood, make a frame that this would be mounted to, that then could be mounted to either a vehicle or a bicycle or whatever you would like to mount it to. Now I have a small trailer that I made that is pulled behind whatever vehicle you're going to use it on and depending on uh, how much you want to run it would be depending on the size of the tank. So far I haven't bought a carbon fiber tank that can get up into the 4,000 or 5,000 PSI range to give give the vehicle that you're going to be driving a long enough distance, say like 100 to 200 miles. But I've heard from other people on the internet that they've purchased uh, compressors that would go up to 4,500 PSI or around $200, so I may be looking into getting one of those. And if that's the case, then it might be possible to get a carbon fiber tank, although they're pretty expensive, around four to $5,000 for, for the tank itself. So we'll see how that goes, but I just wanted to make a little short video and let you see where I've come so far and what my plans are right now for the near future is working on the other valve getting it done and then buying some material probably aluminum box tubing to uh, mount my actual metal parts to and then we'll go from there so thank you for checking in and if you care to subscribe you'll be notified anytime that I do do some short videos or I work on something that I want to put out and for those of you who have been my subscribers over the years and followed me I appreciate that thank you very much and I hope you continue to watch and I hope I'm doing something that's worthwhile in the long run so till next time goodbye